Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Nick Delgado. And this segment of our podcast is a really exciting one. I think you're going to enjoy it. I'm with Kika, relationship and sex coach. She's a divine, spiritual individual. Kika, can you tell us about the name of your book and some of your work? Well, I'm just launching my second book, and I'm really excited. The name of the book is Tantric Sex, Love and Relationships for the Modern Man. And I have been working with the highest executives in the Silicon Valley for over 15 years. So I figured it out what's going on with men today and what we need to change and do to empower men to meet the power that woman is handling right now to, to them and to the world, right? They are rising, but there is, there is a need now for the man to rise in a way that he meets her and he meets him again. And he can be that power that centers, grounds her, holds her, and allows her to dance. Does that make sense? It makes sense. And I'm with Esme St. James, mm -hmm. and you have written a book, Chick, Chick Magnet. Yes. Chick Magnet, what men don't know that women wish they did. Esme St. James. <laughs> Tell me more. Tell me, oh, okay. So the book is, has been a labor of, labor of love because um, I have so many girlfriends that tell me oh Esme there's no good guys out there and I go oh sweetheart there's an ocean of great men out there they just don't know how to present themselves and how to be with you so the book is all about teaching men what they need to do in order to attract a woman and also that's the first part the second part teaches men what women are thinking so, you know, when you do this, she thinks that. And so that's why you need to change it and do it differently. And the third part is more things that we can all use, um, you know, like a good manner. It's like how to take a compliment, how to be a good leader, all things that will woo a woman. And so my message is just to, I'm doing it for the guys in a way, but really I'm doing it for the women because I want to, all my girlfriends to find the love that they're looking for mm. and I want that for myself too and you know what we're sick of settling for less than we deserve and men are also settling for less than they deserve because they don't have the power to be vulnerable and to be open and to really understand what we're thinking and that's the key to finding the right woman this is dr. Nick Delgado and I'm sitting between two hot sensual women and my new book coming out is The Guide to Sexual and Sensual Pleasure for Both Men and Women. So I think you'll find uh, you've got uh, three authors here who are excited to share with you some really important tips. So Kika, tell me some tips that you have found in your work that makes it absolutely essential for that initial attraction for a man and a woman. And how do you keep that excitement going? For the initial attraction, I think the sexiest thing that one can have is feeling good and loving yourself. Then when you exude your self-love, like the beauty is not this outside here. The beauty is the way I think and feel about myself. That's what expands when I walk in a room, the way I feel about myself. That's what make people feel good about being around me. It's the way I treat myself every day, the way I talk to myself and the way I feel around other people, how comfortable, Comfort. Comfort is a big deal on dating. Comfort. How comfortable am I being sitting here with you, talking to you, being with you, looking into your eyes, being able to be present with you. I'm not thinking, oh my God, my ex did this. Oh my God. Oh, what is going on? I am here and I'm relaxed and I'm cool. I'm good. I feel good with me so I can be good with you. And that seems so simple. But yet, a lot of people cannot be fully present, cannot be fully comfortable with who they are. And what does it take? A lot of inner work. It takes those quiet times, going in, seeing yourself. What do you think? I want to know, what do you think about this? Well, well I was thinking about eye contact, and, and I, I recognize that certain cultures are really comfortable with direct eye contact and deep, and they feel like, unless you're looking in my eyes, I can't trust you. But other cultures, it's a little bit intimidating. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking directly into their eyes initially, when you haven't been given permission yet, it, it can be a little intimidating. So you almost have to judge, how is that other person reacting? If they're looking in your eyes and you're just being drawn in and you're just feeling that depth of, of warmth and love, 
then continue and, and allow that gaze to continue. Um, I was in, uh, at USC and we were in a psychology class with Dr. Frazier and he had us pair up with, we were to choose a woman in the audience that we were attracted to. And so we looked through the whole audience and I looked at one lady and she looked at me and it was like locked on, like, whoa. I mean, and then we got together and we, we were supposed to pair off and, and all we were to do was to look into each other's eyes without saying a word and sustain that gaze, you know. And it really caused a, an interesting level of bonding that I didn't even know this lady. And I've, I was feeling like, oh, my gosh, I feel like I love her, like, I, like I've known her for a long time. It was an interesting experience. And Dr. Frazier went on to explain that at the unconscious level, you know, humans make decisions rather rapidly about if they're, A, initially attracted to the person, and B, you know, how do you hold that attraction by maintaining a certain degree of self-confidence and warmth and love, and it can be expressed quite a bit by the ability to look into another person's eyes. It's, you know, it's like we talk about, you know, look into my eyes, eyes baby, and, uh, and there's a lot of truth to yeah, that. Yeah, the doors to the soul, a lot to be said about that. There's another layer of it, is me meeting you where you're at. I can, I can make all these stories, but I need, I can be like this powerful, beautiful being, but if you are not in a powerful day and I meet you with all that power, then then you feel overpowered or you feel overwhelmed or you c it, how about this? Like we get together and I see where you're at and then I come and meet you. And then if I need to raise you to where I'm at, I will. But I give you some time. At first, I meet you where you're at. And I think that a lot of guys miss that part. In the initial contact, they come with whatever they, their, their plans is, but this is, this is not about your plan. <laughs> <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> this is not about your agenda. No. It's about meeting each other where we are at and then raising from there and then engaging. And I love what you said because one of the most powerful tantric practices that I share in my seminars is this, I put people to look in each other's eyes and I said, here is a soul that is, is having difficulties and challenges in their lives just like me. They have passion and love just like me and people start to settle, see their own humanity in each other's eyes. And then like, it's, it's amazing because the, the, the gushes of divine love comes in and then people start tearing and sharing vulnerability. And that vulnerability, when we, when it, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of well, like, I'm Brazilian, I talked with move. my hands. It's good, move. <laughs> I'm, I'm just so allowing you to hear so you know you're, you're in tune there. Go ahead, sorry. So we, where are us? <laughs> in your <laughs> eyes? I got lost in your eyes? Yeah, we were lo you were lost in so my the, eyes. The you have beautiful seminar. eyes, by the way. They're very engaging. I mean, it's. Thank you. I can see where mm -hmm. someone could just look into your eyes for a long time and, and find a, an eternity of love and life. Oh, thank you. And You're I welcome. think we have that, like, all three of us, like, this beautiful eyes is because we have done our work. We feel comfortable with who we are. And when we find these souls that we can connect and share love so deeply like how much love can you take in mm -hmm. when somebody's looking at you how much love are you willing to give and those things are then that's when people feel really deeply touched and they cry and they open and the vulnerability it starts to show and i think vulnerability is a beautiful gift when we can show up powerful and yet show vulnerability at the same time it creates powerful connections kika what's the title of your book again Tantric sex, love, and relationship for the modern man. Relationships for the modern man. Now, in the book, I address a lot of things. Communication, sexuality, how to become your own very best lover, to master your ejaculation control. But not only that, imagine expanding the length, the strength, and the power of your orgasm. And ejaculate when you choose and want to. And not only that, use that energy to manifest things in your life. It's life force energy, and it needs to be treated as such. Uh, on that subject, I, I remember when I was young, and uh, I was reading books about it, and they said, well, to control your ejaculation so you didn't come prematurely, you had to go through mathematic problems in your mind <laughs> while you were having sex. 
And I'm like, well, that doesn't seem so romantic. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it would have matters rather, wouldn't it? I mean, I would think, you know, they say think about dead cats or something. <laughs> that cat's <laughs> <in> over time. <laughs> but quite by accident, uh, in, in my 40 year history of creating formulations and supplements and herbs, I was working on this is a true story. I was working on a way to help men reduce what's called estrogen dominance because men have a problem with too much estrogen as much as a woman could have estrogen dominance. Mm -hmm. And a woman, if she has too much estrogen, her breast gets really sore. She might have a tendency towards ovarian cysts or there could be fibroids. I and mean, there's a number of symptoms that relate to or even excessive weight gain. But in men, one of the symptoms is premature ejaculation. When a man has very high estrogen levels, he, hmm. he can only almost be just barely touched and he'll he'll ejaculate you know without any control <laughs> yeah and, and and many young men you know they're in that that state as well so when i created this product it, it uh, that i actually call live detox i'm gonna have to come up with some sexier name for it because now <laughs> that we know it solves premature ejaculation but this product live detox combined with uh my product called estroblock it works so well that men would go from about two minutes to last 25, 30 minutes. So I, I noticed this was occurring. And then I, I talked to a number of other men and they said the same thing. I said, yeah, it was my experience as well. So I knew it wasn't just me and I knew it wasn't just a handful of guys. It was hundreds of guys. And so, um, I now warn them, I say, listen, you know, maybe you don't mind uh, ejaculating quickly. Some businessmen think that's okay and it's cool to come and, you know, get on with your business. And others feel that, sex and love play is a very romantic encounter and it's okay to enjoy each other for 30 minutes, an hour or two hours. And I remember lecturing a, a group of doctors. 30 minutes is still sad. <laughs> no, no. Listen, listen, Kika, Kika. I was in a group of doctors and I was teaching this information and the doctor said, who has time for a half hour, an hour of sex play? And I'm looking at him like, well, if you don't have time to have sex for an what hour you with your for? lover, what are you doing? You're doing book work and you're doing medical charts. Get a life. Have someone help you with get the charts. Life. Find a way to, you know, get your life in order and, and uh, or, or, uh, you know, hire uh, workers and assistants so you can enjoy life. But what about the quality of life and sex and love and intimacy? Everything. Yeah. So Everything. Yeah. what do you think about this? About sex? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, okay. First, I want to address the eye contact thing because I actually wrote about this in my book, Jake Magnet. And there's an article written by the New York Times that if you gaze into someone's eyes for four minutes nonstop without saying a word, you can actually fall in love with them. Now, I've, I've tried this, um, you know, with guys. And you can tell a lot about somebody by just looking in their eyes. Like, to your point, Kika, um, a lot of people who are afraid to become vulnerable will start laughing or start talking or try and break the contact because they're not comfortable with themselves with their own heart so i i love doing this exercise because somehow it, it always brings forth feelings of love and even even sexual powers start to come to the surface because there are no words you're just looking deep into each other and so i love what you said look deep into my eyes that's very very true and that's one of the things that i recommend to my clients to do not for four minutes with somebody you just met but when you're wanting to meet somebody wherever you are socially you make the eye contact just a little bit longer than you're comfortable with. And then, you know, you look away. And if you notice her looking back at you within 45 seconds, oh, you're in. Time ah. to make your move. I okay, love it. Okay, so I'm thinking li literally in, but <laughs> okay, well, sorry. Well, that's your mind. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's sorry, sorry, sorry. That's the masculine. <laughs> All right. No, but that, that, that's like an invitation to go talk to her. That means yeah. that she's interested. Here's another thing that um, I wrote about is that most men will go out somewhere and look around for women and they'll spot the women that they're interested in, whichever ones they think are hot. But what they're missing out on, because then they go and try and talk to her or they're too afraid to or whatever, and they get rejected. I suggest look for the women that are checking you out. Now, that might not be exactly your type, but when you do that, you might find the most interesting women. And it's so much easier to go and mm. practice with them. And you might find that she's actually really amazing, really interesting. Maybe you've been looking for the wrong type. Mm. Do, you, do you believe in love at first sight, uh, Esme? Absolutely. Esme. Esme, that's right. Yes, absolutely. In, in instances, it can definitely work. There's like an instant physical attraction. Now, here's the problem with that sometimes, though, is sometimes that is just a sexual attraction. And if that's all you want, that's cool. Go for it. But it can... Sometimes I have found personally 
when I meet men and I have that instant attraction, it's like, mm, that can be the one that doesn't work out because that's all it is. And it's just an animal thing, which is lovely if you want to play it out. But I need to go deeper than that. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll like go talk to them, but I need to go a lot deeper than that. So not to be mistaken, yes, love at first sight, but also sexual attraction at first sight. They're two different things to me. Wow. I, I know Dr. Frazier reported another study where they had people divided by a large, thick glass where they mm-hmm. could see the other person walking into the room. Uh-huh. And they put a notepad on the, on the table and they actually asked them, write down whatever you think when you f- see this other person. And so a woman would walk in, the man would walk in, and they actually drew their blood at the same time. And what they found was a number of the people said, I don't know what it is, but it's it's love at first sight. And they literally wrote down love at first sight. Wow. They then measured uh, a, a hormone called PEA, phenylethylalanine, uh, PEA, and it, it would spike at a very high level and it's released from the brain. So there's some primitive thing that allows us when we identify another, you know, a female that we're attracted to or the male is attracted to the female, a female to the male, is a matching of genetic comp comparability or, or mm-hmm. uh, comparable to which would then sire a healthy child so there's yep. something that us humans innately really know at a deep level unconsciously mm-hmm. who's right for us at least sexually and and from a lust standpoint and, and from a reproductive standpoint we're we're wired by nature to pick a mate that we're going to produce the best offspring with and so I mean, we weren't supposed to live this long ever, you know, but I'm sure by now we would all be dead if we had lived 200 years ago, unless we had like these phenomenal genes that, you know, we turn into wizards and live 200 years. But we now have to deal with we live longer and we get past the point of being able to reproduce. And so that doesn't work in the long run necessarily. And it can, but it's not a guarantee to me. Right. So love at first sight. Yeah, um, I want to bring something up. When sure. you were talking about the eye gazing and falling in love, mm-hmm. I like to use the term awakening in love, That's right? Great. Because with yeah. fall, it creates all that pain, all that mm. confusion. And another thing that I teach people in my seminars is how about if we can just choose to run the energy of love with whoever we choose at any given moment. Mm. So I am love and I learn how to run love how to bring my central juices up, how to feel good. And then I share that feel good, that love, that admiration, that respect, that all of that with it being in front of me without an agenda, without an agenda, just simply because I'm choosing to share love. And, then, and that happens when we meet, mm-hmm. right? This man and I are uh, great friends yeah. and we are able to share love. And, yeah. and it might not be a sexual love, but mm-hmm. we share love. We do. And sometimes we share love with people that we are attracted to. But if we look from rela- two relationships with this perspective, I just choose to share love with this person. And then it, you are allowing something different to happen. Yes. Because it, 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 there is this dynamics, giving and receiving love. Right. And then there is this allowing and taking. And let me tell you, Doc, it's really delicious when a man knows when to take because he knows we are allowing Mm -hmm. and we are consciously allowing. But he knows he can take and it's a dance. Right. He can take in a way that he knows. But when he overtakes and we are not allowing, it doesn't feel good. And then we are out of the wheel of consent. And then it creates all this mess, right? So we need to be able to identify. It, I'm, I'm giving with an expectation of receiving something, then I'm not fully giving. I, I need to give with all my heart. When I'm sharing this love, looking into your eyes that you feel, mm-hmm. is because I am giving freely. I'm not expecting anything back. I'm just enjoying to give it to you. It's a gift for me as well as it's for you to give that. But then when you receive it, that's the gift back because I feel received and men loves to feel received. Ladies, men really love to feel received. Do you want to give a gift to men? You, you make him feel received, right? But then there's the allowing and taking and I invite you to observe these dynamics in your life. Like when are you giving love? When are you receiving love? Are you giving fully? Are you creating expectations? Are you allowing? 
Are you taking? Are you taking when you are allowed to take? A lot of people and men are afraid to take when they're allowed to take. So let me ask you this, both of you, in the pursuit of love and in a long-term relationship, do you believe it's important to have some innuendo, some pre-talk, maybe a sexy text, something that leads up to that night, if you're going to make love that night, to bring that other person's spirit, their energy, their sexuality, their interest, to have them thinking about it so that women tend to want more in the way of communication and foreplay and discussion, whereas men are a little bit more reactive. You could pretty much say anything to them and they'll react fairly quickly. So how do you think that's important for a relationship in, in this pre-communication prior to sex instead of, honey, I'm home, let's have sex? Are you talking about people in a relationship or people that just met? All right, let's put them in a relationship because people that just met Mm, that's a whole Ty Lopez once said it takes seven hours for a woman to get to know you before she'll even open up to the probability that she trusts you enough to possibly seven have sex hours. which might wow. be th the three different dates you know three dates seven hours she feels comfortable enough do you believe that's true you know what I do and that's why often I, I tell my guys you won't know if she really likes you until after the third date she might kiss you on the first date she might kiss you again on the second date if she does it on the third date, it's very likely that you will see her more. Um, the first time she's just checking you out, and she's not totally turned on yet. She just wants to know if you're a good kisser. She might be turned on momentarily. It doesn't mean any more than that. So um, in terms of, and, and the innuendo and stuff, it doesn't matter if you're just started dating or if you're in a relationship already. You should always be doing that. I mean, my gosh, you should always be flirting with your partner. It's huge. Whatever it is, because like you said, to your point again, is you're, you're giving love, you're giving attention. Giving attention is giving love. So instead of you know, complaining or saying, get some milk, add a little flirt in there because might as well add the kind of attention that you want her to receive so that you'll you know, continue that when you get home. Don't you think it's better if a woman flirts with you, uh, implies that you're going to have sex, teases with you, and then has, a, has sex and then unloads on you about the things she wants instead of the other way around. I want this, I want Perfect. that. And then go and have sex and the guy's like lost it because he's kind of upset, you know, versus now he's been pleased and he's like, okay, honey, anything you want. Whatever you want, take my wallet, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, exactly. Yeah. I, um, you know, and it's also good to negotiate these things in a relationship to um, make agreements with each other about how you want that to be in case there's a pattern that's not working for you because yeah if someone's complaining to me i'm not going to get excited i'm gonna be like you know what go do your thing i'm i'm kind of busy over here uh thinking about other things so definitely and here's the thing too in terms of dating and flirting this is why i don't like to get asked out last minute because it doesn't give me time to think about what might happen on the date it doesn't give me time to think about oh he's thinking about me preparing whatever he's going to prepare or planning or date or something i need to let that fall into my mind and heart and body and everything so I can ponder on it. I don't like last minute stuff. I, I really, and I need to think about what I'm going to wear and shoes and perfume. All these things matter greatly to a woman. So at least two days ahead of time, a week preferably would be much better. I love it. <laughs> So, so foreplay, innuendo, uh, talk, I mean, what about love languages? Are some people more kinesthetic and they're comfortable with being held and others want to be spoken to and others want to get gifts and, and uh, look that they're all cleaned up and sharp and go out on a nice date? I mean, tell me about that. Are love languages truly so you important? you want to talk about love languages? I'm still like with the, you like can go the back foreplay. To that. Can yeah. I go back to that and then yeah, address the love languages? Yeah, leading up to languages? foreplay, yeah. Okay. So first of all, like the, the foreplay that this sensuality, this deliciousness that we want, that love making that expands us, that awakens us, that transforms us, that really is delicious, that empower you that to have an amazing day the next day. You want that sex life that charges you, not the other way around, right? That starts with conversation. Guys, you cannot go on in your day and expect that you're going to get home and then she will just like, hi, honey. Uh, uh, <laughs> Forget no, about it. No, 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 no. No, what you do is like you create that connection and the moment you wake up, 
Hello, honey. I wish you a fantastic day. I was just thinking of you. Lunch time, or when you had a break, like, hey, I just thought of you. A smile, a little flirt, little things through the day. You you are awakening her body. You are saying things. You are awakening yourself. You are creating an experience for you and for her any moment. Mm -hmm. And that, and I don't mean the guy like, oh, I'm going to the grocery store now. I'm. <laughs> I don't need to know everything you're doing. I need to know that we are connected. Mm -hmm. I need to know that you are excited about me. I need to know that I'm special for you. And when you create that connection through the day, sometimes two texts through the day, a little phone call, something genuine, an authentic appreciation can go a long way. I tell, and I tell this for couples that are seeing each other for a long time too. Share 10 authentic appreciations with each other through the day. Why mm. would you do that? Those appreciations remind you why you love this person, why you chose that person, because sometimes we forget. Mm -hmm. um, why am I with you again? Yeah. I don't know anymore. Yeah. If you remind yourself often, so when you say that, and if it's authentic, and it is, it's not, oh, I appreciate you, wash the juice. It's not something authentic. I appreciate... I love your curly hair. You're so beautiful today. You're always so beautiful. I love your skin. And that's like, it's authentic. I love her hair. I love her skin. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, that is like, I'm giving her little pearls through mm -hmm. the day. Make her feel good about herself. Reminds her that she's appreciated. She does that to me. It, it livens the, the conversation. Then when we touch each other, that is already a mental open. Mm hmm there is a heart opening. And I always like to say this, like, are you creating the connection from only the parts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you creating the, the connection from the heart, the parts, <laughs> mm -hmm. the mind and the soul? Because, and can you feel it? Like, so one of the things I like to say, like, can you feel fully in your power, be in your belly, feel your body, feel your heart, be alert, be awake, and be all that you are and still share Mm -hmm. all of that with somebody like that's yeah. the depth of presence so when you do those connections through the day you need to express those now the languages you use like when i talk it's like i i check i i feel i feel before i touch you i i go is, is this feel good for him I, i'm watching your expression, I'm, I'm feeling you. I, there, is a, there is more feeling, like I, I feel like I can touch you and I feel this opening that I can just come and touch your back and then mm -hmm. that's okay. Because you, you mm -hmm. gave me permission that sure. was not even verbal, right? So when we are watching these languages of touch, like gifts, and I think we need to use it all. It's like some people respond more to one or another. Study the love languages. Find what pleases you. Tell your partner what you want, but don't focus only on those. Give all of these things in different times. Uh, I think that's very important. We like to feel appreciation in, in many different ways. So using different languages to express love, use them all. Give gifts, give words of appreciation, words of affirmation, touch. And, and then, then there's another thing that I want to address here like, really quick. Some people say, mm, I don't like to be touched. I don't, I don't like this and that. It's not that you don't like to be touched. And I'm going to say it again. It's not that you don't like to be touched. Perhaps that part of your body haven't not been awakened properly yet. Every folding in your body is an erogenous zone. And if you treat it with love and care and enough tenderness, you can awaken it. And I, I have a little short story about, very short, that I, I, I was lovers with the Tantra masters for a long time. And he said, you can orgasm in your armpit. I'm like, this is absurd. Like, okay, this is getting ridiculous <laughs> now. Like my armpit, are you serious? And, mm -hmm. and he started to stimulate it. And he would just go, no, I, 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 I think it's funny because then men will meet me. It's like, hi. But this is, so, so I start to have full body orgasms just by him touching there. Why was that? And this is not like just uh, I'm this special person. No, that part of my body was activated with love, with touch, with tenderness, with presence, with care. 
and any part of your body. Perhaps you feel too ticklish or it doesn't feel good. It can be awakened. So I want you to remember that, that every folding is an erogenous zone and that every part of your body that you don't feel pleasure can be awakened to feel pleasure. So ladies, how do you take the comment that Dr. Kinsey did his studies and found that 75% of women would fake their orgasm to get it over with because they weren't, weren't enjoying the encounter. In Masters and Johnson, the statistic was similar, 75%. In more recent surveys that came out of Cosmopolitan Magazine, 65 to 75%. Now, younger women, they found in the study, were more likely to guide the man to put his head close to where it felt best uh, when he was giving her oral sex or touching her. The older women were embarrassed or intimidated by men. That we, men would give them a backlash of, I know what I'm doing, don't show me what to do. So tell me about this. Is it possible that men need to be better educated about how to first engage a woman, to communicate to a woman, to give her a massage without going directly to her erogenous zones, giving her back a foot massage and, you know, taking a bath together, whatever it takes to build up to that. And then, you know, when it's appropriate, uh, do the proper techniques and, and in some cases learn to watch her masturbate, to know what she likes and how fast and how she touches herself. Is any of this important? I, I, I review this in my book. Tell me, as, as may, what, what is your thoughts about this? important oh just a bit <laughs> oh my god um th this is part of the art of the flirt and so it doesn't matter what age you are i i mean in my younger years i had boyfriends that were younger than me and when we would be having sex i would say well you know do you, would you like me to help you tell you you know what what i like well i know what i'm doing it's like oh my god you so don't know anything <laughs> but you know i love it when a guy takes my comments like a little to the left, a little faster, whatever, and then place with that, not just mechanically do that thing over and over because that will wear me out. So you've got to work it and use your imagination. And yeah, if you're going to massage her, you know, do it for 20 minutes or so without, you know, getting on top of her and you know what I mean? Take your time and let her enjoy that. Let her mind and her body start to connect with your hands and start to imagine where it could go next. There's no rush, there's nowhere to go, nothing to do. Just enjoy yourself. I l and I love to discuss even up front what I like, because that's foreplay right there. I don't know about you, but for me to even get a text from a guy or I'll text a guy, something erotic like, oh, when I get home, I want to you know, touch you here or just run my hand slowly up your thigh or whatever. It's like, really? <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait to get home. Those little things really matter. My mind starts to go. And so you can play with that. You can make it a game and just draw it out. I mean, I'll, you know, with guys, I'll, I'll draw it out. Would you like it when I do this? Oh, well, would you like a little faster? And just play until they're like, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, you've got to play with it and, and make it fun. Don't just be mechanical about it. And absolutely about taking that bath together first or whatever, you know, other things like that, rubbing oil on her. Don't just go for the gold right away because for a woman sex a lot of it is just the foreplay it's just the, the teasing and if you go too fast and just go for it right away she's going to be left feeling empty and you'll be satisfied you'll you know whatever and she'll be like i feel ripped off and so you've got to go the distance you've got to play to go along with it to, to ask questions to go back and forth give receive all of that, that's what makes it wonderful. That's what makes her want to be with you again and longer and more. And your brain will never stop thinking about it. Would you say that this is an accurate statement that women are designed to be basically insatiable? And many women, when they engage in sex yes. play, they love to touch, to feel, to engage for literally hours. They can orgasm for hours. I mean, men, you know, you get them up to a certain point. So I train men. I say, listen, the last thing on your mind should be to mount your woman and have sex and come within five minutes because your woman is going to lie there unsatisfied, even though she breathed heavily, acted or was getting excited. Yeah. But trust me, there was, was a lot more leading up excited. to excited. You said it's it. like, what, you're done? <laughs> We're just getting started. And then lot, even men, you know, like later on in life still don't quite understand. They say, think the act is like, you know, just get an erection, use it, and then we're done and they're satisfied. And like if you, if the woman had an orgasm, well, good for her, you know, and they'd like you to, but 
they don't take it any further. It's like, explore that for God's sake. Use your hands, use everything you got. It's not all about having an interaction and using it. There's so much more to it. And there's so many ways, as you know, Kika will explain with her book and, and what she teaches is that you don't have to actually orgasm as a man, ejaculate that is, you can have an orgasm but not ejaculate and it lasts longer you can use that energy to create more energy and to not have this hormone that makes you fall, fall asleep the turkey hormone after you have Beep sex boop. now he's yeah. gone yeah you're gone it's like, <laughs> but 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 don't want to talk or he's gone <laughs> right you could you can totally make it the most amazing experience and not make it just ejaculation oriented because for us that can get pretty boring honestly mm. No, I, I want to say something that is very important. As a woman, I think we as a woman need to own our pleasure and understand who we are mm -hmm. and understand our bodies and not be ashamed to touch ourselves. And I think it's very sad that 75% of women are not experienced the orgasmic, simple orgasm, nevertheless, like powerful full body orgasms or female ejaculations. Right, and then that most men don't even know that it's possible to have a full body orgasm without ejaculation. And it's kind of like a foreign concept, the whole thing. And uh, that's very sad that we don't know that we're not taught that, that this is not, and this is about getting fully in your power as a human being. It's about mastering this energy and using this energy for creativity, to do everything you want in your life. Now, how does it, Okay, that we did that foreplay, we text each other all day, now I'm coming <laughs> home, I'm really excited, but we don't know each other yet. You don't know what I like, you don't know, I don't know what you like, but there is something about discovering each other and playing. When women direct too much, ladies, when you direct too much, you make him feel unappreciated. So one way to go, it's like, I really love you, what are you doing? But it would feel so much better if you push mm -hmm. to the left a little bit. Yes. And sometimes you just say, today I just want to surrender and I just want you to enjoy yourself enjoying me. When you allow him to do that, then he, he will be more willing to do more. But sometimes it's good to talk about the things that work and don't work. Mm -hmm. But don't make it a business conversation. Yeah, it gets um, boring. Yeah, there was something else. What was the, the original question? Because I was really fired up about saying something and then we got into this whole other <laughs> thing. What was the first thing you asked her? <laughs> like, it, you said, use the love languages and then there was the, what was the question you asked? Well, well I, I was suggesting that uh, women are insatiable, that, oh, yes. that women need a high level of pleasure, consistent, and then back off, let them recover a little while men they take sometimes hours or days to recover a woman can recover in sometimes you yes. know 10 minutes 15 minutes somewhere or even just back off on the, the 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 degree of pressure just gentle around the exterior areas just touching and gently teasing her but then you know as she starts building up again her second or third or fourth or fifth orgasm is going to be pretty explosive if you culture it along in a proper way Yes, yes, and yes, and yes. And the, the now we're talking. Oh, yeah, now we're talking. The, the insatiable. Now, let's talk about the insatiable, right? Because a lot of women never reach that power. Right. Because right. they are taught that good girls don't do it. Right. They're afraid of show up as a sexual being in the world. Or they're thinking I know about themselves as overweight yeah, or, oh, gosh, or whatever, I'm embarrassed. Right. and. I mean, yeah. the, all these side thoughts, and you got to really help women work through that. But there was that a lot go. of repression <laughs> on women's sexuality for okay. a long time. We couldn't own that we are sexual beings, that we are orgasmic, and we love to make love. That was not what we were taught by the church, by the <laughs> government, and by corporations. This is by not what parents. happened. Even by yeah, our parents, by our we parents, parents, never, parents, parents never discussed our greatest, anything about that. Greatest gurus of our love and sex life. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so this concept that okay, I am a woman in my power, enjoying my sexuality. Now here I'm with my partner. Can I express fully? Some guys cannot take it. Like if I, I don't want to sound so weird, but like That's my okay. orgasmic power is powerful. Yes. I trained my body to be an orgasm machine. I can breathe right now and have a full body orgasm and I keep going. My orgasm is a state that I get into and I can stay there as long as I want. Now, this is not a superpower that I have. 
this is something I can share with you how to get there. You can train your body to get that man or woman. Mm -hmm. The problem is we are not taught how to expand the length and the strength of our orgasmic power and what does it do to your brain, to your immune system, dog? Like when you really can sustain your orgasmic power for a longer period of time, what does it do to your brain? The studies that they have now on the brain and the immune system and what happens to you when you sustain long periods of orgasmic energy and if that's a powerful orgasm, it's powerful. Well, laughter, pleasure, orgasmic, explosive feelings, these are, the reason we're talking about this is because studies show that people who have an early interest in sex and they engage in sex over a longer period of, the, of their life, they live longer. Uh, studies of centurions, people who live past 100, almost every single one of them had a tremendous orientation towards enjoyment of pleasure and sex. And who doesn't enjoy laughing and having a good time? I mean, in a great uh, sexual relationship, things are funny, you know. You say something and it's like out of nowhere, your unconscious mind goes, that's hilarious. And it's okay in a relationship to laugh while you're having sex and celebrate uh, love and intimacy and passion because we as beings crave that. We've lost that in our society. We're sitting in a phone texting and we're, we're not communicating. We're not spending time with each other. We go to work, we come home burned out instead of recharging our batteries with love. And guys, you gotta get this. When you're building up sexual energy and you're pleasing your woman, feel that it may be okay not to orgasm that night and maybe the second and third night you're building up so much sexual energy i know that when i train my guys that sometimes it's the fourth or fifth night and especially mm -hmm. if they're a little older they're, they're not 22 years old they're you know they're 40 50 or in their 60s or 70s by the tantric book is the fifth time you make love you ejaculate yeah and, and and there's no rule of thumb but let's just say that if the man's hormones aren't optimized that Oftentimes, they can direct that incredible sexual energy into being very creative during the day in their work, uh, helping people, mm -hmm. contributing. And so when you finally do explode, it's this m amazing relief and, and excitement. But I know that men who I help them to optimize their hormone levels, they can build and build even in that same engagement. And then when they finally do come one, two, three hours later after foreplay and sex play and enjoyment, that when they finally come, it's this huge relief and they feel so great that they look forward to the encounter and the woman looks forward to it because they basically have pleased their partner and they've reached that point of ecstatic orgasm. And some, some women like Z-Rock uh, Khan tells me, you know, orgasm is like being with God. I mean, it's just, it, she, she explains it as a spiritual experience. Do you believe that? Uh, Hugely. Oh my gosh, it's totally a spiritual experience. That's why I feel so good. <laughs> There's a reason it feels so good. It's because you get in touch with what you know, your whatever you call your God. It's it's just such a mind body experience that you you go into another world. It's it's just the best feeling on earth. And why shouldn't we learn to extend that to make it better, longer, deeper, richer? Not just women, but men too. And it's 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 what we have. Why not enjoy it? It's not a bad thing. I mean, like you said, women, we were not we were trained to be to have shame about our bodies, about our sexuality to, you know, we were called names, sluts, whatever, if, if you know, but for the guy. Oh, no, he's just sowing his wild oats. But with who are those women not doing the same thing? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. And so I think now, you know, things are kind of equalizing a bit, and a lot of men aren't sure where they stand in that field anymore. But the old ways don't work for the way we women are thinking now. It's step into, step into your spiritual power of creating that orgasm that, that, and holding back on it and not letting it blow, because then the moment is gone. Extend it. Extend it. Mm. Now I can talk a lot about extending the length and the strength of orgasm. But when we are loving, making love in the tantric way, we ride the wave of bliss. So this wave of bliss, when the man is breathing, that is even this dance where I inhale him inside of my being all the way. So his lingam penis is entering my heart and entering my consciousness, right? Like, like he is coming to my temple to bring flowers, incense, 
prayers and he's honoring my temple with this beautiful light. Like that's how we like to envision it in Tantric lovemaking. He's coming there like I exhale back into his mouth. He receives me. Now I'm lightening his heart with my love and and we keep going on this dance now when he feels the urge to ejaculate if i have female ejaculation i can ejaculate for him and then i shower him with the waters i love this description from the ancient tantric books that the waters come from the heavens clear and awaken every energy center in the body open every energy center in the body release that love that in the in the ancient times they call it amrita which is the elixir of long life so you shower him with the elixir of long life he breathes in and this dance of orgasm now we're talking about a high level of love making we're talking about so love making we're talking about that the subtle body, like the energies around your body, like the auric field around you. You, Usma, have a masculine aura around you. And then there is nine layers, right? Like, it's many layers, but let's say that is nine layers. So when we make love in this l tantric love making, mm -hmm. now my masculine energy enters your feminine energy and we change. We start to have the dance of the divine feminine and divine masculine. So now we are in this wave of bliss dancing together. Other layers of energy, other aspects of our beings, our power center now is connecting. Now our heart is connecting. And then we go through these waves and we awaken every cell in our bodies. All these energy centers start to dance and merge and we recharge each other in a very powerful dance. And when you sustain that orgasmic power, she keeps on. I can go 40 times in an hour. And that's not a superpower, ladies. You all can do it even more. This is not a superpower, as long as I stay hydrated. I had boyfriends <laughs> saying that I need an IV. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> but yeah. but why I'm bringing this up? Because it's so foreign to a lot of people, right? Like, oh, this is weird. Like, this is... Well, she can come for you. That's a new concept that men never, never hear. We don't hear this. Like, she can ejaculate for you. And not only that, you can ejaculate, which is bringing the ejaculate energy up to your spine, all the way, and expand every energy center in your body. Now, this is deep... This is profound. This is a, a love making. This is an experience that enriches, charges, and awaken every part of your being in your entire life. That you get that love that you shared with your partner. And now you are a conduit of a higher love to everything you do. Well, since we're getting so intimate, I, I thought it'd be okay. Oh, honey. I, th <laughs> I thought it'd be okay to share. <laughs> I thought it'd be okay to share that. When I first learned about ways to optimize uh, a man's hormone levels and a woman's hormone levels, but I discovered there were certain hormones that combined with certain herbs that when you reach that certain peak that you could, I could actually ejaculate without touching myself, which like, okay, that's very strange. But my levels of sexual energy would build so high from being with someone I wow. loved and after the f first, second or third day, literally, you know, it, it's almost like you're talking about being able to ejaculate at will. And I, I, I tend to believe it now because <laughs> I know I've experienced it and I'm like, okay, that's, that's out of the ordinary. This is not normal. You normally have to touch oneself. Choose but you could, when and if. Yeah. So you could build up this wonderful, beautiful energy and tension and we call it tension but it's some kind of unique energy this life force that we have and it's probably what drives the human race to continue it's obviously without this life force we wouldn't be attracted to each other and engage i mean i only have five children ages nine to 39 so you know be, you have be, been busy <laughs> being a healthy male um I, you know i expect to continue to enjoy my life and uh, seek a woman that i can engage with and for me I, you know, random sex is, is not fun. And, and it's not something that I don't, I don't think pornography is healthy either because men no. get so conditioned to look at something that's not even real. And men need to attach their energy and their love and feel secure with a woman. So that's really important. I think, I think it's important because it's tough with some people that are 
let's just say they're on certain substances and you know they're alcoholics or drug addicts and things so you you have to somehow have maybe a friend introduce you to another friend that knows okay this person's safe to be with this is a good match for you and you know maybe there's matchmaker services and i know you have things that you talk about as in your book chick magnet but you know overall i think we need to open up the forum for people to feel comfortable with love and sexuality and sensuality in the right conditions because it's such a powerful force that you really have to decide who you're going to share this force with. But it builds it, with time. It also all starts with the first touch and this is the thing a lot of men are afraid to do, especially the nice guys. There's the Mr. Nice Guy thing where, you know, guys get friended. They go on a date and, you know, they never go on a second date because the woman says, well, you know what, I'm not really looking for anyone right, right now. Well, why do you think she went on the date? Of course, she's lo we're all looking for somebody. Come on. But she doesn't see um, that masculine energy in him because he's afraid to touch her because he's been told it's not okay to touch a lady. And so they wait and they wait and nothing happens. The thing with touch is the minute you touch somebody, I touch you, it awakens the oxytocin. It creates a surge from your brain. It's a chemical from your brain, and it's called the cuddle hormone. And it actually makes you have feelings of bonding. This is why when a woman has a baby, the first thing they do is put the baby right on her chest so they can bond immediately. Now, here's the thing. For men, the oxytocin lasts for about 48 hours. But for women, it can last for up to two weeks. And so here's the thing, guys. If you meet a girl and you... You know, met her somewhere socially, you might have touched her on the arm or somewhere, wherever. Don't play that silly game of, oh, I should wait three days before I call her again because that's what it says in our rule book of, you know, cool guys. That's not going to work. You, because after that, the oxytocin has faded in you and you might not call her and you're missing out on a beautiful opportunity to go on a second date or a first date with a woman. And she's still thinking about you and she's like, why the hell hasn't he called yet? Pardon my language. Why hasn't he called yet? Um, because she's st it's still surging in her body. So do it before the two days is up. Call her up. Make that date and carry on. You've got to touch her initially in the right spot, not inappropriately, but especially on a first date, you've got to create that oxytocin in the right way. I explain that in my book, by the way. So get touching. You, you bring up a really great point, and that is that uh, there was a study of these little rodents called voles, and they found that certain voles had a high level of vasopressin, mm -hmm. and when they would engage, they would engage with the other mate for life. They, they stayed with that one um, individual uh, relationship. But this other group of voles had very low vasopressin levels, mm -hmm. and unless they engaged every single day, they would mate with different mates and never be attracted or bond. And so what they did was they did an interesting experiment. They gave the, the group of voles a substance that re suppressed the vasopressin levels, and those voles started mating with other um, other mates and they no longer were bound to that individual and the other ones that were having trouble staying in a relationship if you will they increased their vasopressin levels and they rema remained then uh, committed or um, you know what what do we usually say in, in a relationship that they, they remained um, in in a, a bond uh, so men are, are similar men women sometimes don't understand this that if a man engages once a week or once every third day, their vast pressin levels are extremely low. When they engage on a daily basis and they have an encounter and it, it leads to mutual lovemaking and mutual satisfaction, after 30 days, that man will bond very closely to that woman. Mm -hmm. And so women have trouble with players and guys that are going on you know, with other girls and everything. And part of it is they don't realize that a man needs to reach a certain level of trust at the internal, at the unconscious level. Mm -hmm. And also they need to reach a certain hormonal level that they remain committed and um, uh, stay in, in a um, exclusive relationship. Yeah. Otherwise, That's it just doesn't work. Wow, that's I did not know that. Um, that's very good information for us. Yes, <laughs> I didn't know about the vasopressin. So how do you how do you maintain that as a man? Um, it, it, it's it's partly physical engagement um, on every encounter. And Make love with him often. Yeah, more often, like daily. Okay, then. <laughs> I mean, that would be ideal. <laughs> so so think about it. 
we, you know, we as authors of, of three books on love and relationship and intimacy and tantric sex and, and attraction, you know, we together have quite a vast experience, I guess. And we've never really done a show together. This is our first show together. Awesome. And we've known each other. Esme, we just met today. It's true. And, and I really appreciate it. This is like just all came together beautifully. Here we are through people in the same, the same area with three different areas of expertise to boots. Hello. And, and uh, of course, Brendan Burchard, we're here for Experts Academy, yeah. so it's pretty exciting. And, and Kika, we met at a Brendan Burchard event um, about a year or two ago, right? Yeah, at I least. a couple of years ago. And yeah. we were always in communication. We kept saying we were going to do this. And we finally I did love, it together. Yeah, I we love the it. work you do. We're doing it. <laughs> Nick, yeah, I, lo I love Esme. Like she, we live nearby and we, um. we talk. And I'm very grateful that we are sharing this with your audience because... People need this information, and I think the three of us have precious gifts to give. And being here tonight, I learned a lot with you guys, and I think it's kind of like we are enriching each other's practice, if you will. And it's a gift to have you and you in my life, because we are, we are sharing this, this awareness about love, sex, intimacy to create happiness to create more joy more intimacy to create a world where people i always say this that if people are orgasming more and if they're more fulfilled and feeling loved you know there's this thing about men in love making that the guy goes like how much does she need like how much sex do i give to her like ah oh. it's like how much does she need this she doesn't need that so much she needs no. that we sometimes we yeah. want that yeah. but you know what we want we want our heart full. Yes. And that's how you measure. If you are aware enough to see when her heart is full. And sometimes, dog, just like when we talk, yep. my heart is full. Because I feel you love yourself. I feel you are aware. You're connected. And more men need to become more like you. Like that, that they are bringing this love, that this awareness. So when we want to make love until our hearts is full. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we all want. It's true. I mean, and I've been in a relationship where we made love almost every day and I still felt empty because we weren't doing it together. It was, I felt like it was being taken from me. It was like that. Yeah. And it, I almost got resentful about it because like, well, don't I get a say in this? And I didn't really have much of a say in that situation. I didn't feel that I did. And so it's not just about doing it every day. And it doesn't have to be, you know, all that activity. It can just be like holding somebody just like putting it in and keeping it there for a while, but not actually going any further than that. It's, it's about holding your bodies together and having your, your, your chakras together, touching and just breathing into each other. And that is lovemaking right there. And you can do that every day. That's there is something else yeah. about this that I want to add that mm -hmm. I think it's very important uh -huh. is a lot of people say, well, I don't feel like making love today. Well, you don't come to it feeling like making love. You come to the practice to feel like making love. So you, you hold your partner, you kiss your partner, you open to your partner. You come to the love making as a practice, yeah. as a meditation. Yeah. And that's a meditation that I go to joyfully. Mm -hmm. Joyfully. Yeah. And there isn't any expectation from it other than that you will be together holding each other or exchanging loving thoughts for each other it's it's not that you have to have all these acrobatics that's and then the desire yeah. rises yes then the desire when rises when we feel that. like the heart is connecting mm -hmm. the time is like we're just relaxing together all mm -hmm. of a sudden we're just doing this hand breathing that we're just watching each other's breath and we're holding hands mm -hmm. and matching our breathing and then all mm -hmm. of a sudden our energies are merging and then yep. oh that's like i feel this like I'm feeling more relaxed and then starts like uh, everything starts to mm -hmm. relax and then yeah. feels warm and yeah. yummy and juicy. Yeah. It, it's not that obligation. And I feel like a lot of times men set a goal or we need to. Mm. Uh, no, if you make her feel safe to say no, she will say yes more often. Oh, yes. I love that. I love that. That's, it's very, very true. I like to hold your yeah. hand. I, I, I. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I think it's about time to end the show and continue the excitement and fun. Uh, you're gonna, you're gonna miss out, but we have things to talk we'll about. Have fun. So uh, this is Dr. Nick Delgado. 
Uh, tune in at DelgadoProtocol.com. Share this as uh, those of you who go to the podcast and give us a like and uh, a review. Uh, we choose every week someone that will get one of our incredible products. You might want to try the H2 Ultimate Antioxidant, uh, Neuro Insight, or maybe the Live Detox or the Nitric Oxide product, or the product that uh, maximizes your testosterone for both men and women need testosterone. Uh, I've probably spent a better part of 40 years trying to figure out which herbs, what supplements, what hormones help men and women to feel like they're 22 years old again. And when you feel like that, you feel like making love to life every day. So be well, be strong, and uh, check out uh, uh, Chick Magnet, Esme St. James. Yes, that's right. Chick Magnet, when men don't know that women wish they did. <laughs> and check out Kiki's book, uh, the name of which, Kika. Tantric sex, love, and relationship. S tantric sex, love, and relationships for the modern man. Now I have a gift for you. If you go to my website, divinekika.com, tantric sex, love, and relationships, it's like just put your email in there, and it's a 25 minutes video that will change your life. Divinekika.com. Dr. Nick Delgado saying, I'm in love. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Nick. Thank you so much. <laughs>